beautiful grade California yellowtail right here that I just caught yesterday. And we're gonna do some processing and then we're gonna do some eating. So I'm gonna start out using the Gerber processor. It's one of my favorite tools. I use it for chopping up sardines and mackerel when I'm chumming, but it also works great for uh, getting rid of the gills and the guts on the fish. With a knife, sometimes you'll puncture the actual guts and then you have kind of a mess on your hands. And what I'm doing is I'm releasing the top of the gills and the bottom of the gills. And then um, I'm going to remove them all at once. So there's just a little bit of skin here that holds the gills. You can actually even fold the gill plate a little bit like that. Kind of helps just to make a little bit more room to get your scissors in there. So I like to deal with this because you can see how much blood there is um, coming off of the fish. I like to do this first so that none of this blood gets into the meat. I usually just stick my finger in here and just kind of get that undone. That's the idea. So you can slide everything out there at once. It's a lot less messy when it actually comes time to filleting the fish. So that's pretty much all of its in insides all at once. Going into that bucket, you're left with a relatively nice clean cavity. Just flush the hole in cavity like that, you know, I'm just spraying water in there. So now that we're left with a beautifully clean yellowtail, we're gonna grab one of the controller knives. I have two different sizes here, the six inch and the 10 inch. I kind of use them for different parts of the fish, um, but I'll probably mostly use the 10 inch on this one since it's a little bit of a larger fish. So part of the reason I kept this area intact was because I really like to smoke the bellies of the yellowtail. You can smoke the collars too, which are this section of the fish. So what I do is I start right here behind the fin and I make a, an incision and I'll just work my way past this harder piece of the, the fin and all the way up to the head till I hit the top bone. Now come back here to the back of the fish, make an incision right here and I'm just making a very light incision. I want to get too deep in case I am getting at the wrong angle, but this works pretty well. And this fish has relatively small scales, so I'm not bothering to scale it. And I'm also gonna leave the skin on because if I vacuum seal it, I believe that the meat stays better uh, in the freezer with a little bit of skin on it. Basically go from this insertion and cut all the way back down to the tail. I'm always cutting away from myself, never towards myself. And we're gonna be left with a really nice belly piece and it's gonna be awesome. Going along these bones, you can kind of feel them and hear them. And then I'll use my thumb to kind of help guide here. Do the same thing from the back. Go from the back of the fish and kind of use my hand here. I like to wear a glove on my left hand because this is the area where you can kind of stand more of a chance to poke yourself. And I'm just working slowly with the blade of the knife against the spine here and kind of pulling up as I go. You can almost just take your knife and slide it along that bone. Be, be able to turn that over and you're left with most of your filet. So now these ribs right here and the stomach lining, I'll trim away. Just kind of start off by. And I like these knives because they're so flexible. This is gonna end up being jack food. Jack, you ready? Can you sit? Take it slowly. Good boy. We have a nice cut there. 
I'm probably gonna make some sushi tonight, so I'll leave this loin intact. So for right now, we're gonna take this and put it in the cooler over there. I do this just to kind of keep any flies or whatever out, just lay it skin down. And if there's ever like little bits of, of meat left on there that you forget, you can take a spoon and actually scrape these out. And a lot of the time I'll just use that for, for dog food or you can make, um, you know, like this is really good meat that I left on here. You can chop it up finely and make some uh, ceviche. Let's see if we can do a little bit of a cleaner job on the other side. And keep in mind, I'm not a professional filleter. I'm just a regular fishing dude who likes to go fishing and eat the fish that I catch. So don't be too critical of how I'm doing this. There may be better ways to do it, but this is how I do it. So with me not being the best filleter in the world, I've left a little bit of meat on the carcass here, but if I'm gonna keep a fish, I don't like any of it to go to waste. So, this is a little technique that I learned. You can go in on the carcass here and use the spoon and scrape in between the bones. Actually remove quite a bit of, quite a bit of meat. A lot of people just throw this part away. I like to make ceviche with it, or if my dog behaves himself, he gets one of the best meals of the year. Same thing here, I'll just kind of put the point of that spoon in, right in between all of these bones and just pull back and you get quite a bit of meat. And then right here along the, the edge, there's more. That's where I'll use the smaller knife. It's a little bit of a tighter area. And these I'm probably gonna save for myself but a lot of the time you can actually cut more up into the head here. But that's gonna be a really nice tasty chunk of fish. Same thing right here, beautiful. Okay, so there we go. This will go in the cooler now. That's what it should look like when you're done. Got nothing but an empty head empty spine and then a cool trick for throwing this stuff away is you can actually just break it into pieces like this it fits in the trash can a lot better i'll just take this and dump it in the bucket so i really like this cut right here because if you take a really close look it's it's pretty heavy and fat. You can actually see like some of the marbling on the fat right here. And when you put this on the smoker, I put it on on low heat for like three hours. And literally this stuff, you just peel away the lining and it'll peel right off of the skin. And it's literally like having fish butter. It's amazing. It just melts in your mouth. And uh, you can mix it up with whatever you like, some mayonnaise, salt and pepper, celery, and make a really good fish dip out of it and eat it with some crackers. So this might be one of my favorite parts of the fish to eat. Jack's well-trained. He knows that if he hangs around when the fish are getting filleted that he usually gets some primo sushi grade cuts. It's got a nice little notch for your finger there. There's a little bit of a red bloodline that runs down here. I'm gonna extract this strip right here and I'm gonna slice it up thinly tonight, and that's what we're gonna have for sushi. And you can see, once again, this is kind of getting into that belly and how the meat changes and how different it is, you know? This is very um, almost see-through meat at the moment, and then you can see how much fat this has in it. A lot of people, before they actually eat their fish raw or just eat their fish or fillet them for that matter, like to let them rest for like two days on ice. And what that does is it, it removes a lot of the moisture from the fish. This fish is still pretty moist. Uh, I caught it yesterday evening. So after filleting that fish, I'm gonna give my knife a little sharpen. And I actually really think this is pretty cool about the Gerber knives is the sheath comes with a little sharpener on it. Pretty handy. I always wipe the blade off after I'm done sharpening it because right down the middle here, oh yeah, that's nice and sharp. 
And what I like to do here is I'll shift the fish right to the, like the edge of the, the counter. And that way I can get my knife nice and flat and just run it right along. I like this sharp point on the knife because you can kind of work it under underneath the, the piece you want to extract first. Now, if I was like cooking this fish, it probably wouldn't matter so much to remove this slightly red piece, but since we're gonna be eating it raw, I'm gonna do that. More uh, jack off cuts. So these are my two choices for eating sushi, uh, both beautiful pieces from the loin and I like them because they have this exquisite marbling to them. I'll cut them at a 45 degree angle and then put them on top of some sushi rice or put them in a roll. And that's what you eat at a sushi restaurant. When you order hamachi, it's just farm raised yellowtail from Japan. This is naturally wild caught yellowtail from California. And you know, depending on the part of the fish, you can really cook any part of it. You can smoke any part of it, but this is really the part of the fish that I like to eat for sushi. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you a little bit. I'm not a professional fish filleter. You know, you could probably do a better job, some of you out there. And uh, I hope it inspires you to go out there, have some fun, catch some fish, fillet them up and eat them.